Hello friends. So a little bit of a weird angle here, but today I want to show you guys all of the books on my TBR shelves in my library. This does not include books that I have not yet hauled. So you're sitting on my book haul cart of books that have not been hauled yet. So we won't include those. Those will be on the TBR shelf as of next month. But right now, these are all of the books that I own on these shelves that have not been read. There are about like three and a half shelves worth of books here. I'm not going to go too in depth with the synopsis of each book because we would be here for a long time. But just a quick overview of everything. I guess I'll try to break it up by category. You guys love to let me know if you like this style of video. I love seeing what books are on people's TBR shelves because I'm a nosy girl and I want to know what books you are going to be reading soon. So hopefully you guys will be seeing me read these books relatively soon on the channel. I am not somebody who gets too caught up or bogged down in the number of books I have on my TBR shelf. It doesn't bother me too much. The only reason that I want to try to prioritize reading books from my TBR shelf sooner rather than later is because my interests change so much and I fear that if I buy a book now and I don't get to it when I'm interested in it, then come a year later, I might not be as interested in the book and then I'm less likely to read it, more likely to have wasted my money. That's my only perspective when it comes to prioritizing books on the TBR shelf. Now, there are some that I'm purposefully putting off because I know now is not the time to read them, but I will be interested in them later. So some books I just hold on to for that reason alone. There's a lot of new books that have been hauled recently since I've switched genres. So I'm very curious to know what you guys do with your TBR shelves. Do you guys tend to only read from your physical TBR shelves or do you constantly purchase new books to read? How big are your TBR shelves? Do you have a ton of unread books? It's really interesting because I used to be primarily a library based reader. So I would not purchase a book until I already read it. And then I really started getting in this mood where I didn't want to pick up books to read. And I think it's because I was reading all ebooks on my Kindle, which is totally fine. Like that's a privilege in and of itself. However, I found that I was enjoying reading much more and more likely to read if I picked up a physical book. So then I was like, I guess I need to buy some books to read. And then I really contributed to my TBR shelves during that time. But now I love being able to walk into my library, look at these shelves and be able to just pick up an unread book. It's a newer thing for me because I used to really not keep many physically owned unread books. And so I would have to spend the time searching online for something to read next. And now I can just walk in, pick up a physical book. And that's the moment that I'm at in my life. That's what's bringing me joy right now. Like I said, it's a new thing for me, but it seems to be working really well for now. When it doesn't work well anymore, we will figure it out then, move on to something new, but this is what I'm loving. Okay guys, here is a quick overview of my TBR shelves. As I count later on in this video, you'll know I have 89 unread novels seven, including this one, <laughs> unread manga, and three unread graphic novels. So down here, we have some older titles, some sci-fi fantasy and the graphic novels and manga up here. Actually, on these next three shelves, we have ones that I've mostly hauled recently, literary fiction, short story collections, poetry, things of that nature, and then all of my book of the month minus one that I've already read, Oh, that means it's 88. Okay, 88 then, because I counted by accident the one I've already read. So there you have a nice little overview of my TBR shelves. So everything you see over here, minus the push, has not been read yet. Let's go to the bottom shelf first, rather than completely tear these apart by genre, because they're kind of organized in a way that I like them right now. Um, we're gonna go to the bottom shelf first, and I guess we'll just move up from there so I don't have to completely reorganize these. So let's start with the manga on my TBR shelf. We have Uzumaki, which is a horror manga by Junji Ito that has to do with spirals. That's about all I know here. Volumes seven and eight of Berserk, which I was gifted by a friend. I desperately need to continue on with these, so hopefully I'll get to them soon. And then we have some random beginners of manga series that I've picked up that I would really like to start soon. So we have Demon Slayer. I did start watching the 
anime for this and decided to put that on hold until I've read the manga because manga works better for me than anime most of the time. So I'd like to start this soon. We then have Komi Can't Communicate Volume 1. I would also really like to start this. I know there is an anime. I really want to try out the manga first and I've heard great things about this and I tend to like contemporary manga a lot. Then we have the beloved Attack on Titan. I've not read any of this yet. I've not watched any of it yet, but I know people are absolutely in love with Attack on Titan. And I, I have FOMO. I want to know what it's about. I want to participate in the conversation and I'm hoping to love it as well. And last but not least, we also have the lovely The Ancient Magus Bride, Volume 1. I've heard just excellent things about this as well. I know so many people love it and so I want to get into this. So seven manga volumes unread on my TBR shelves. Next, the unread graphic novels. So another gift I was so graciously sent is Star Wars The Old Republic Legends, um, and this is obviously the giant, beautiful omnibus that could actually kill someone, it's so heavy, but I am so excited to read this. I don't know for sure when I'll get to it, but I cannot freaking wait. Another gift that was sent to me is Tale of the Robot, and this is the Dance Gavin Dance graphic novel. If you guys know about the robot from Dance Gavin Dance, so I'm, I'm really excited to get into this and check it out. Really don't know my gift receipts coming out of it. I don't know too much about it, and I really haven't heard anyone ever talk about it, but I'm excited because if you guys don't know Dance Gavin Dance, it's like my favorite band of all time. And finally, the last graphic novel, we have Avatar, The Last Airbender. This is The Lost Adventures. I have read a lot of these graphic novels. I love them. Hanging out with the gang is like the most nostalgic feeling ever. It is so comforting and lovely. I'm saving this for like when I need something, when I'm sad. I need to remember that it's in here because I forget about it on this shelf. So those are the three unread graphic novels that I have. Okay, the rest of the books that I've taken off here on the lower shelf is a combination of mostly sci-fi, a little bit of fantasy, and some horror and middle grade. It's a random combination of things here. Let's first talk about the one nonfiction on the shelf, which was a recommendation from my dear friend Ola, and this is Women Who Run With the Wolves, Myths and Stories of the Wild Woman Architect type, which I am greatly looking forward to reading by Clarissa Pinkola Estes, PhD. She is a wild woman who represents the instinctual nature of women, but she is an endangered species. Very much looking forward to reading this. I don't know when, but like I said, definitely gonna get to it. A couple fantasy on the TBR shelf. This one you guys will have just seen featured in a video, so I'm not going to talk about it, but that is Black Leopard Red Wolf by Marlon James, which is like a literary fantasy that is very polarizing. People either love or hate this, but I'm really excited to read it. Then we have two gifts that were sent to me as well, um, part of a fantasy series. So the first one is Blackstone Heart by Michael R. Fletcher. And the second is She Dreams in Blood. That's the sequel. And I think the third one's coming out soon or it already did and this is just an adult fantasy series. I'm really looking forward to picking this up. I've heard great things about it from people I trust. Before we get into the sci-fi pile, a couple other random ones, we have The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. This is one of the oldest books on my TBR shelf that I've had for the longest amount of time, and I think this is more like a literary fiction. This is a translated book that I'm also really excited to get to this year. And then another gift that was sent to me, I'm this far into it, is The Terror by Dan Simmons. You guys know how much I love this author and I was having a really difficult time reading this um, Just was not in the mood after I burned myself out on horror So I had to give it a break, but I will get back to it and two more uh, middle grade novels actually So we have the girl who drank the moon by Kelly Barnhill I adore middle grade fantasy and I've heard just such lovely things about this So I'm looking forward to this and then we have I cannot believe I haven't read this. This is shameful Keeper of the Lost Cities Unlocked, which is like 8.5 because we've got not gotten book nine yet. It's chunky, but I know this is just like a lot of information about the world and then a short story. And finally, the sci-fi pile on this shelf is pretty large. We have The Best of All Possible Worlds by Karen Lord, which I picked up at a library sale. Not a fan of this cover, but I hope I really love this book. Angela recommends it very highly, and so I am excited to get to this. We then have XX by Ryan Hughes. A friend and I purchased this but when we had not heard anyone talk about it yet at that point, and this is like a mixed media format. There is, oh, newspaper clippings almost. Like it's 
uh, files and it's just, it's very, very interesting format, kind of like Illuminae files or something of that sort. I'm very nervous to read this. I'm not going to lie. It's huge, but I'm also excited to get to it at the same time. Then we have the Dark Lord trilogy um, from Star Wars. So Labyrinth of Evil, Revenge of the Sith, and Dark Lord, The Rise of Darth Vader, which should be something I absolutely lo love because I'm a huge Star Wars fan. This was a gift that was sent to me as well. And I am just waiting till I'm in the mood because it's like chunky. It's it's so big to read. But Vader is a favorite of mine. So being the Dark Lord trilogy should be something that I love. Then we have a short story collection I picked up up north and that is New Sons, original speculative fiction by people of color edited by Nisi Shaw. It's just what that sounds like, but beautiful, beautiful book and really excited to read that short story collection. Then we have some random ones I picked up when I was in my sci-fi loving moment. I mean, I still am. I love sci-fi way more than fantasy, but we have Tales of the Dying Earth by Jack Vance. And this is, I think, three books together. Um, and I believe this had a pretty big influence on Hyperion, which is my favorite series of all time. <laughs> Tied with Dune, whatever. When I say that, I mean them both. So I'm excited to get to this finally. And then last year when I was doing the SF Masterworks project for my channel, I purchased a couple more. So this one, I think I might get rid of, honestly, because I've heard some bad reviews lately, especially from people I trust, make me think I'm not gonna love it, but that is Ringworld by Larry Niven. I don't think I'm gonna love this, but I still own it. We'll see. It's not that long to get through, but I hate how they do the font in these masterworks editions and then we have a book uh the book of the new sun volume one and volume two so volume one has the shadow of the torture and the claw of the counselor and volume two has the sword of lictor and the citadel of autart autart so uh i will get to these i don't know when i'm very very nervous to read this series for some reason but i'm also looking forward to it okay so shelf number two actually three and three and a half are books that I've hauled more recently. So we'll probably go a little bit quicker through all of these. This is a lot of literary fiction or just different genres that I didn't read so much in the past and that are newer to me. So I wanted to pick up some so that I could choose from them when I'm in the mood. Okay, starting out on the right hand side, we have these vintage Japanese uh, classics editions that I have purchased recently. The Wind Up Bird Chronicle by Haruki Murakami. Dying to read this after I love Kafka so much. Then we have the Makoika Sisters by Tanizaki. I haven't heard too much about this, but also super excited to read it. And then we have Out by Carino. And this is a novel that I think I will love. I don't usually love thrillers, but it sounds very interesting. So I'm excited to get to those. And I just had to buy them because how beautiful. Some more that I've purchased very recently. We have Shit Cassandra Saw by Gwen E. Kirby. This is like a short story collection, feminist tale, I believe. The End of Loneliness by Benedict Wells. I think this is about grief, love, loss, very hard hitting topics. So should be really good. We have Written on the Body by Jeanette Winterson, and this will be my first book by this author, I believe, but heard excellent things, started reading the beginning of it. It looks wonderful. A uh, poetry collection I picked up recently, Aphrodite Made Me Do It, by Trista Matier, and I need to read this one soon, just because I forget that I have some quick to read things on my TBR shelf, and I know this will be quick to get through. Then we have one I picked up a while back, actually, that I'm still really looking forward to, and that is Cursed Bunny by Bora Chung, and this is a translated novel from the Korean, I wanna say, by Anton Her. And this is like fantastic horror, elements of the fantastic and surreal to address the very real horror, horrors and cruelties of patriarchy and capitalism in modern society. Beautiful book, really wanna read that soon. One I don't know too much about is The Idiot by Alif Batuman. And I really know nothing about this. A dramatization of the uncertainty of life on the cusp of adulthood, a heroic yet self-effacing reckoning with the terror and joy of becoming a person in a world that is as intoxicating as it is disquieting. Interesting. A couple Eve Babbitt's books that I picked up. We have LA Woman. We have Slow Days, Fast Company, The World, The Flesh, and LA. Looking forward to reading all these. I've not really heard anyone talk about them, so I have no idea what to expect. And then Eve's Hollywood, which I guiltily picked up just for the cover, because come on, 
one that I was sent, The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. Looking forward to checking out more by this author. The Pisces by Melissa Broder, which I did enjoy Milk Fed, so I am also very interested in picking this up soon. And then finally from this list, we have Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. And this will be my first book by this author, so I'm really looking forward to checking it out. It's very, very long. It's like chunky. I guess it's only 400 pages, but I'm excited to read this. Getting to the left side of this shelf, we have one that we'll be reading very soon because it won the Patreon buddy, pull, buddy read poll and that is Betty by Tiffany McDaniel. Love this author's other novel that I read, The Summer That Melted Everything, so I'm really looking forward to this. We have a short story collection that I picked up purely based on this gorgeous freaking cover and that is The Dangers of Smoking in Bed by Mariana Enriquez and I believe this is translated yeah, translated from the Spanish by Megan McDowell. Can't wait for this. I need to prioritize some short story collections. Animal Wife by Lara Ehrlich. This is another short story collection cover by, I had to pick it up. Ooh, My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Mashfe. And this is just so many good things have been said about this book. I feel like I'm really gonna love it. Fingers crossed I really love it. I wanna get to that soon. One I will be reading in a couple months is Boy Parts by Eliza Clark for a video I'm doing reading Jen's favorites. Real Life by Brandon Taylor. I think a book that I picked up from several people's recommendations as I started getting into more literary fiction genre this year. Same thing goes for Stay With Me. I heard just great things about this from several people so I decided to add it to my TBR shelf. We have No Longer Human, which is another one that I've been very curious about, although I didn't realize that this was written so long ago. So it'll be very interesting. First published in 1958. I thought this was like a newer novel, so I guess I was clueless. Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut, and this is also going to be my first book by this author, which I'm really looking forward to. I think it might be absurdism or surrealism, something of the sort. A Gift That Was Sent To Me by a Friend, The Power by Naomi Alderman. Very much looking forward to reading this feminist tale about what would happen if women had all the power. Pet by a Quakey Amezi. This is their young adult middle grade book. Absolutely love this author, so I already know I'm gonna enjoy this. And On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong. I've heard just absolutely phenomenal things about this. So it's time for me to pick it up and check it out, see what I think for myself. A couple more, we have Luster cover by, but I've also heard excellent things. How stunning is this edition? Similar to Acts of Desperation by Megan Nolan. I've heard from friends that I possibly will like this and I really wanted to own this edition. My Body by Emily Radajkowski. I'm really looking forward to reading this. I think it just has themes that will resonate with me and I'm really looking forward to checking it out. And then finally we have Little Weirds by Jenny Slate. This was a bookstagram buy that I saw somebody post some of the lines from, and I think it's short stories. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm excited to see. Okay, now we're gonna move to the very, very top shelf because I did just haul all these books pretty much like last month, so we're just gonna snappily go through them. These books can sort of be summarized by pink books, books that bookstagram has made me buy, and books that are aesthetically pleasing or sad girl lit. So, like I said, talked about a lot of them very recently, so we're just gonna quickly move through them. Girls of a Certain Age by Maria Adelman, The Life of the Mind by Christine Smallwood, Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Malors, Outline by Rachel Cusk, Breasts and Eggs by Mako Kawakami, Ghost by Dolly Alderton, The New Me by Halle Butler, The Woman Destroyed by Simone de Beauvoir, I Love You But I've Chosen Darkness by Claire V. Watkins, Oh, this is my boyfriend's he brought over, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson, The Portrait of a Mirror, a novel by A. Natasha Joukowsky. New Animal by Ella Baxter. This will be read for Aussie April. Chouette by Claire Oshetsky. Pure Color by Sheila Hetty. Oh, I suppose these two were on my nightstand and I had to like reorganize my room. So now they've made it to this. We have Mindfulness, an eight week plan for finding peace in a frantic world, which is like a workbook you work through. You don't read it like super quickly. One I picked up at Mount Rainier National, no, at uh, North Cascades National Park, I believe, is Nature Love Medicine, essays on wildness and wellness, edited by Thomas Lowe Fleshner. 
Very much looking forward to reading this. The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. The Sea, the Sea by Iris Murdoch. And All Along You Were Blooming by Morgan Harper Nichols. Like I said, sorry for going through those so quickly, but I did just haul all of them in my most recent book haul. So that top shelf up there is probably the one that I am most excited to read from. Okay, so this third shelf up is mixed with Book of the Month picks that I have either been sent or picked from like my own membership with them. And I'm gonna go over the couple at the end here first that are not book of the month. So this pile includes some gifts. First we have Puppy Show by Leon Ross. This will be read very, very soon for reading Simon's favorites. Gorgeous freaking cover, can't wait to get to this. Another gift is a final, The Final Revival of Opal and Nev by Donnie Walton. And this has to do with a band, which I'm really anxious to read after how much I loved. Daisy Jones and the Six. I picked up Bewilderment by Richard Powers just because the premise sounded really interesting. And I've heard good things about this author. And I also picked up randomly at my independent bookstore, The Teller of Secrets by Bissy Adjapan, which is like a feminist novel dealing with the political upheaval of late 1960s post-colonial Ghana. So we'll see, but I'm excited to pick it up. And my boyfriend got me this for Christmas, Beasts of a Little Land by Juhi Kim. And I'm actually reading this this month. So I'm really excited to finally dive into this historical fiction. And finally, I think another gift, I think this was sent to me and that is Migrations by Charlotte McConaughey. I'm very excited to read this because I really did like reading Once There Were Wolves. So I have high hopes for this as well. Okay, my two stacks of book of the month books that I own. Actually, the first one that's in this pile, I've already read. So we're gonna remove that, but I wanted to keep it with the book of the month picks. So I have, like I said, either been sent these or they're ones that I purchased with my own money and I really don't know too much about all of them so I'm not gonna go in depth but we have Black Cake a novel by Charmaine Wilkerson definitely plan to read this very much looking forward to it same thing with Fiona and Jane by Jean Chen Ho I believe this is interconnected short stories really looking forward to this I love this cover so definitely be prioritizing those. This one I'm unsure if I'm going to keep or not, but that is The Magnolia Palace by Fiona Davis. I believe it's a historical fiction, which I do love historical fiction, but I'm not sure if I wanna read this one or not. One I definitely plan to read is Somebody's Daughter, a memoir by Ashley C. Ford. I believe this has to do with her dad being in prison as she's growing up. Another one I know I plan to get to is The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green. I've heard mixed things about this, but I think it's gonna be something I really enjoy, so. I'm excited. And I would also like to get to Olga Dies Dreaming by Zoe Chattel Gonzalez. Hope I'm saying that correctly. And I think this has to do with a hurricane. Okay, next is one I will be getting to very soon and that is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. Especially with the buzz of the new adaptation coming out, prioritizing this, reading it very soon. I think I did purchase most of these. The Girl with the Louding Voice by Abidare. Very much looking forward to this. I love this stunning edition as well. Um, same thing with Transcendent Kingdom. I think I'm reading this in April by Yagazi. I have just heard phenomenal things about this. I think I'm really gonna enjoy it. Then we have Severance by Ling Ma. I've heard only great things about this as well. Once again, beautiful cover. This is one I remember picking, The Perishing by Natasha Dion. I think this is historical, like in the 30s, deals with prohibition, maybe feminism. I suppose we'll see, but it sounded really interesting. Same thing with this, a memoir, Beautiful Country by Kian Julie Wang. And I know this has to do with an undocumented child living, living in poverty in the richest country in the world. What I will be reading soon is Things We Lost to the Water, historical fiction immigration, that's all I know. What I'm very much looking forward to is The Death of Vivek Oji by Akweki Amezi. You guys know I love this author, so very excited to prioritize that. And then another one that I did pick, I actually did purchase this, but I'm not sure like when or if I'll get to it. And that is The Family by Naomi Krupitsky. And I think this is like a historical family saga, drama, novel, something like that. So we'll see, but it sounded interesting. Okay, so I just counted and there are 89 books on that shelf that are unread. So that includes full length novels, short story collections and poetry collections, nonfiction, fantasy, historical, literary, sci-fi, you name it. There are also seven unread manga and three unread graphic novels. So 
Um, you know, that's fine. I don't feel the worst about it. <laughs> it could be worse. And like I said, I, I don't really feel pressure if I don't read some of these on the shelf. I'm not going to be heartbroken. There's definitely some I will read and get to absolutely. But if I don't get to others, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. And it really kind of did make me uh, think about the books that are coming in and how frequently they're coming in. But I do feel better that as of March, I've really only purchased myself a handful of books. One I had already read and like three I'm reading this month. So I suppose that's good. Let me know how many unread books you own just because it's fun to talk about. I'd love to hear. How do you guys prioritize your TBR shelf? How do you monitor like how many books you're bringing in? Do you not care at all? Does it stress you out? Or are you a-okay with having hundreds of unread books? I'm just a curious gal. I'd like to know. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.